What is the experience like of filming a Transformers movie? Because there's a lot, there's a lot that you can't see that's going to end up in the movie. So how do you go about visualizing all these giant machines? Yeah, you just have to be able to a use your imagination and really just make believe and throw yourself into that. Know that this is a heightened sense of reality. Cars turn into robots, so. <laughs> Whatever, if you think it's if you think what you're doing is too big, it's probably not. You could probably go bigger. Um, and also, I found that I really, really, really had to be able to listen to Michael and really understand exactly what it was that he wanted because he can already see the final picture, so he's already edited it. So you just have to be able to and work. You have to work really fast. He's, no one's got any time for you to be like, sorry, I didn't understand what you meant. <laughs> um, so you just have to hear it quickly and then and then do what you're told and use your imagination. What was it like seeing that culture clash of Transformers and Arthurian legend? The, the two kind of mesh together better than you think, but was it kind of odd seeing those? Yeah, I agree with you, yeah. So initially you're like, how is this going to happen? <laughs> how are we going to be able to relate to this? But you do, you just, you just, I think with these movies anyway, you just let everything go and you suspend disbelief and, uh, and you just go for the ride and Michael, always manages to piece together ideas that you think wouldn't necessarily blend and they do beautifully I thought that it had a really I think that it's really linear and has a really you know has a really clear storyline and actually when I first read it I was like so um in that when so when that happens wh where did we just come from no Laura don't worry about it you'll you'll get to know <laughs> London Oxford which I'm, I'm from Oxford so oh. it was wonderful seeing my hometown yeah uh, on the big screen in a Transformers movie which I didn't expect no like filming kind of back here in England awesome I mean Michael literally took us on a tour of the UK he just basically looked at a book and was like right where where should you go and visit? And he just went to visit and then filmed there and then blew it up. <laughs> so yeah, it was awesome. We did Blenheim Palace, we did Stonehenge, we did the university in Oxford, we did uh, quarries in Wales. We, it was just, it was amazing actually. It just took us on a tour of my home. And Vivian has a, quite a key role. She has kind of a grand destiny in this film. So what's your favorite thing about playing that character? Um, well, again, she wasn't the kind of character that I expected to pop up in a film like this. She, um, I loved how strong she was, how independent she was, the fact that she was this medieval history professor. Um, she played polo. She is just, uh, yeah, again, just so unlikely to be in this world. Um, and I was excited about seeing whether or not that was going to work, and hopefully, hopefully it has worked. But. Um, and of course she has, yeah, as you said, she's predestined for this particular mission. And um, that's obviously super cool, knowing that that's your ultimate kind of, that's your journey. Yeah. And she, and, she and Kate are from very different worlds. Very um, different. And they're kind of thrown together. Uh, so what was it like working with Mark? Uh, was he a lot of fun to work with? Mark's so much fun to work with. He's so hardworking, so prepared, so, you know, but also just has so much fun. He's so silly and he's really, really funny. And he loves doing all the kind of improv stuff, which I do as well. And and we just really played on that whole two people from different worlds, may as well be speaking different languages, um, completely culturally different. And yeah, it was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Sometimes some of the improv was a bit close to home though. I was like, ah. Oh. I mean, that was another cup of tea joke. <laughs> but we had a lot of fun. And Vivian has kind of the same introduction to the Transformers that Sam does in the very first movie, and that she finds herself inside Hot Rod. Yeah. <laughs> what was that scene like to film, uh, kind of that car coming to life around you? I mean, but that's what's so exciting is that it's obviously not when you're filming it. So you're just, again, you know, you're, it's all about make-believe and, and, and it's all phys it's phys a lot of physical reaction stuff and, and go big or go home in those situations. And then when you see the final product, you're like, oh, that's so cool that my Citroen just turned into hot rod and now I'm being taken off to... Did you get to drive a Lamborghini? Uh, I didn't drive the Lamborghini. I drove the Citroen. Oh. I drove the Citroen, yeah, a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my little Citroen only got to 35 miles per hour stick shift <laughs> versus a Lamborghini, which just blows your face off. If yeah. you could have any vehicle turn into a Transformer, which one would you like to see, even if it's something unconventional, like a bicycle? <laughs> um, mm -hmm. 
Any vehicle. Oh, I'd quite like to because I've got a little boy. He's 19 months and he has just so many different pushy, weird, you know, trucks. And so he's got this little scooter. So it might be quite fun to see what his little scooter turns into. Probably look quite similar to Squeaks. Something like that.